Welcome back to the channel guys. I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to show you how to undervolt your NVIDIA RTX 3090. This will work for the 3080 as well. Both cards have quite a high power draw so this will be beneficial for these particular models. Now I'm using the Asus Tough OC edition RTX 3090. It has two 8-pin PCI Express connectors and has a total power draw of 380 watts. Now that's Quite a lot of voltage or quite a lot of uh, power to be drawing um, from a graph graphics card and this is not very desirable uh, myself included that if i could draw less i definitely would but this creates um, excess heat as well so you can actually reduce this voltage and um, keep the same level of performance of your stock settings as well for the most part so i'm going to show you how to do that now so the first thing you want to do is download msi afterburner I've already got MSI Afterburner running, so I'm using version 4.6.3 Beta 5. Don't worry guys, I'll put links into the description box so you guys can download this a lot easier if you don't already have it. You also want to be downloading um, Rebutuna Statistics Server. This comes bundled with MSI Afterburner, so when you're installing it, install them both. They are independent softwares. This works well to give you all the statistics when you're um, playing your game, so you can monitor your performance and your voltages uh, live uh, while you're playing so it's very useful so when you've got MSI Afterburner open you want to plot your voltage the way to do this is to bring up your voltage curve and uh, um, or plot curve to do this you have to hold control and press the F key this will bring up your voltage and frequency curve editor now by default in my card um, you have around, if you wanted to drop your voltage to, uh, let's say 8.5, you'll be at about 1654 megahertz, which is quite low. Now I'm gonna try and go for um, 0 0.825 volts. This is quite low. And at default, you'll be at 1605 megahertz. That's far too low to be gaming. You lose a ton of performance. So what you wanna do is increase that voltage um, I would say start at 1800 megahertz and work your way up. See what the maximum stable core clock you can get at this voltage point. Now I've ended up settling at 19.30 or, or 1930 megahertz and um, it's completely stable. I haven't touched the memory. So your mileage will vary because silicon um, quality is different between cars, even cars of the same model. So you have to kind of um, trial and error to find out your maximum or your best stable uh, core clock. So just bear that in mind. So anyway, um, once you've hit the tick to apply those settings, you wanna uh, run a few benchmarks, check the stability and uh, check your performance against your, your stock settings. So um, what I'm gonna be doing is comparing this against uh, just stock settings. The only thing I'm going to be doing is increasing the power limit to maximum just to give uh, my stock settings every opportunity to boost to the maximum core clock it can. Um, of course, if you've got something like a Strix OC model, you will have a higher power limit and thus have a higher power draw. So this might even be more dramatic for your card than it is for mine. So let's get into uh, some games to do some testing.
So that's it for the uh, benchmarks, guys. So you can clearly see that you can actually use less voltage and achieve higher performance with the RTX 3090 with a bit of undervolting. Tomb Raider with the undervolt, I was able to get 99 frames per second average at uh, 4K with the highest preset. And with stock settings with the maximum power limit, 97 frames per second. So not only was I using less voltage, I was also able to have a more sustained higher core clock and um, achieve better performance with cooler temperature as well which is great all um, positives so there's nothing bad about doing that um, in borderlands in particular you actually saw an increase in performance as well i believe it was uh, 72 frames per second against uh, 70 frames per second for the non undervolted settings so um, just because you have the more sustained higher boost clock of course your because of the less uh, voltage that the card is using, uh, my card was obviously uh, pegged at 0 0.825 volts, whereas the stock voltage was be around about 0 0.94 or 0 0.9 point like two. So almost a whole 0.1 volt saving. And this keeps you further away from the power limit um, of us not letting the card um, basically decrease the core clock once it's reached that power limit. So again, it's all a positive um effect on the card so you can actually increase performance while running higher clocks while using less voltage it is possible so hopefully this video has been useful to someone who wants to do the same um, again links in the description for the software used uh, thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video